Yeah, hello. So, yeah, I'm the, I'm the guy that came up with Minima. Uh, I've been a coder my whole life. Started on the ZX Spectrum 25 years ago, 35 years ago, and I've uh, been coding ever since. Uh, full stack, you know, all of it. Uh, actually started in the business world as a physics engine programmer for uh, Xbox games, which um, was uh, very similar, actually, in many ways to decentralization and decentralized systems because in those days everything was done using mass and springs and local information so uh, there's a little connection there. Um, I fell into Bitcoin in 2012, fell in love with it as many of us did and was just blown away by the technology, by Satoshi and by what Bitcoin was doing. Um, for me it sort of changed I think my attitude towards Bitcoin when the whole you know, SegWit war started, when Bitcoin Cash, when, um, when it occurred to me and it sort of became obvious to me that it wasn't as decentralized as I thought it was, when it became obvious to me that actually uh, the miners had a lot more power than I thought they had and I had a lot less power than I thought I had. So what are the problems with this uh, centralization? Well, from a technical point of view, centralization brings in fragility into the system. It introduces points of failure, as, as, as was being mentioned. Uh, it, it introduces, uh, for a system like Bitcoin, um, the ability to attack the system in ways that um, are not what we wanted. So the only reason, really, that you want to be using a blockchain-style system is for the anti-censorship. The, uh, the hit you take from using a blockchain uh, in terms of efficiency and throughput, you know, you better be sure you're getting your money's worth because otherwise there's no point using it. And the, the real value proposition is in the anti-censorship. So with the miners um, having frankly centralized to you know, a very extreme degree, this now started to become a problem. And you know, as for, I'm sort of now of the opinion of a zero one, you're either decentralized or you're not. Your protocol is either a decentralized protocol or it isn't. And it's clear to me that you know, the Bitcoin protocol is centralizing in the miners. And no amount of clever maths and no amount of clever crypto is going to stop that centralization. And there's only one way that this is going to end, and that way is that there's going to be one miner. And then at that point, the whole thing's over because then you can attack the system. You know? So when you know, we're already sort of at that stage. I'm sure the Chinese government actually does own all the miners. I mean, we're not there yet. You can't even price Apple in Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin's still nothing. It's, 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 it's nowhere near big enough to actually be a problem. But as soon as BP gets involved in the mining, as soon as a proper, large, industrial, mega corporation gets involved and it's buying power stations to run the miners, the, the ASIC hardware that it pays a thousand times less for, there's simply no way that any of this home scene or any of these pool mining is, is going to survive. I'm sorry. It's just going to be you know, a couple of big boys and then they're going to be the point of attack. So what you want is you want a decentralized system. You want a system that is resilient to attack. This is what the decentralization gives us. You want a system where there's just no possibility that anyone can ever attack the system in a way that these, there's, there's no points of centralized failure, no single points of failure in the system. So you want to come up with a system which is decentralized. How are we going to do that? looking at Bitcoin and, and what's happened. Now, what I find interesting is that actually recently, all the new chains seem to have forgotten about this. The only thing that seems to matter is transactions per second, functionality, anonymity, blah, 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 blah. And actually, they've all forgotten the main reason that we were here in the first place, which is the decentralized, anti-censorship, resilient system that blockchains should be. Um, so if you look at um, Bitcoin, for instance, the factor that is centralizing is the miners. So we've got to think to ourselves, well, you know, how are we going to get rid of the miners? Uh, four years ago, IOTA came out and shows us that it was possible to come up with a system, you know, theoretically, I know it hasn't turned out quite that way, but it was possible to get rid of the miners and to actually have the users powering the system themselves. This was, I think this was one of the most, that was the most exciting coin for me when it came out, as I'm sure it was for many of you. Um, so with Minima, um, I asked myself, well, look, if, if we're going to do this, then clearly from the get-go, every single user has to be the same. 
every single user has to run the software in the same way, you know, the same algorithm in the same way, doing the same thing. There can't be any single group of users that are entrusted or no third party which is asked to do something for the network. You can't ask anybody to do anything because that centralizes. And once you start centralizing, it doesn't stop. And it doesn't stop not because of the math, but because of economies of scale. And that is a problem that you're not going to fix. So it was obvious to me at least that the only device that we all have access to and that we can all use to run this network was your mobile phone. So it's like, okay, so we're going to have to write a version of Bitcoin that runs in full on your mobile phone. So the first thing you do is you say, okay, um, POW, you know, POW is objective, this whole POS thing, that's, that's not going to work. It, it's got to be power back. So let's just use the same system and say that users are going to mine their transactions. Instead of paying miners to look for blocks and mining in centralized way, we're going to say each user is going to mine their transaction and then we're going to add all of that power up and out of that we're going to come up with our blockchain. Now P to pool, if anybody remembers that protocol which is still running, is a, is a pool system which does exactly that, where lots of users do a small amount of work and interestingly because of the way the algorithm works you can actually add all of that work up and you can come up with big blocks that are the sum of all the small amounts of energy. Minima uses a system very similar to that. Instead of using miners looking for blocks, we use users looking for transactions and, and mining those transactions for 10 seconds of work each. So that was the first challenge. Got rid of the miners. We said, okay, each user can mine the transaction. The next thing you've got to do is you've got to fit it onto a phone. Now clearly the database is big. These blockchains have huge big books. When I send a transaction on the Bitcoin network, you send the transaction, the miner gets the transaction, he looks at it, he goes to his big book of data and he goes, okay, and he flicks through the pages and he finds the page and he goes, okay, yep, no, this, this is a valid transaction, tick. It goes in a block, you can mine. All the miners have got this book. That book just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. How can we get rid of this? Well, what we can do is instead of every miner and every user having a copy of every single transaction that is, you know, and every single balance and account, you can think of it as saying, I'll tell you what, I'll give each user a page in the book and I'll rip that page out and I'll give it to the user. And every user just keeps the spine of the book. Yeah, much, much smaller, a tiny, I mean, it's actually the one hash, but it's, it's a hash tree. But each user keeps the spine and their page. And when you want to come to spend your money, what you do is you send your transaction and you send your page, which is a small amount of data. And then every other user can see your page. They can check it, check that it fits the spine that everybody has. In a cryptographic way, they can update the spine. And in that way, they know, yep, yeah, he's got this money because he's proved it to me. OK, I'll update the spine. OK, cool. Uh, and that's fine. So now what we have is a system where instead of every user having a record of every other user's money, each user only keeps track of his coins. So I'll look after my coins, and you can look after yours. And we can all prove to each other that we have the coins we say we have. So we've converted it into a proof of, uh, of history of the coins, rather than actually having to have the entire database the whole time. So now we've got a system where you've got users who can do the power. We can sum all of this up and we can make it into a blockchain. We've got a minuscule database, which is actually exactly the same as the big database, but each user has to look like, each user keeps different data. Everybody's database, everybody's little database is different and it only looks after your coins. So if you lose your database, you're losing your coins. You're not losing my coins. You know, I'm looking after my stuff and, and, and you're looking after yours. So, that's basically there, yeah? But what you've also got to think about, which I see a lot in, in the current crypto space, is the development of the coin, yeah? This idea that there's people working on the coin, you know? I mean, Bitcoin is much better than this, than Ethereum, if you ask me. And I don't know if we've got a hard fork in Bitcoin left, frankly. But um, the idea that you keep updating the coin and keep changing the coin, this isn't going to work for me, yeah? Because this means I'm always going to be in the thrall of whoever the current developers are. 
you know, this is my issue with Eve 2. You know, I'm a smart guy, and I look at the Eve 2 dev, the Eve 2 specs, and I'm like, Ooh, you know, that's, that's tough stuff there. There's going to be 20 people on the planet who actually understand how to do this, and they're going to be the ones who are going to be able to decide. You know, my big issue with this is, look, you know, they're, they're saying 1%, 2%, five, you know, who's deciding this? You know, how is this going to be done? We're all being swept along by them. So if you want to be a global base layer protocol, you need to be finished. Yeah, you need to say, here it is, stamp, boom. You know, where you know, this is POP3. It hasn't changed. It works. No wonder it's taken over the world. This is HTTP. This is you know, TCP IP. This is the UDP protocol. These IPv4, these protocols that are the base layer of the internet don't change. That's why they can become. Because you can't update a protocol as soon as it gets to a certain size. It's just not going to work. And so it almost loops back. And it says, well, you can't grow then. Because every time you update it, you know, people aren't going to invest time in it. So what we've got with Minima is we've got a protocol that runs on your phone, that we all work together collaboratively rather than competitively, or you know, doing work on the transactions. And the protocol itself is finished. You know? So we're at, you know, when we get to version, we're at version 0.97, but when I get to version 1 in the next three months, that's it. It's done. You know, and if all the scaling and all the clever stuff that you need to do has to be taken into account at the beginning. So for instance, uh, minima is fully quantum secure. And when I say this to people, they're like, oh, quantum secure. And actually, the actual mathematics to do quantum secure you know, signatures and verification is, is, is no. You know, that, it's just a decision on your part whether you want to do it or not. Now, clearly, you know, QCs are coming out in the next 10, 15 years. And so clearly, if you want your protocol to be finished and you want it to work in 10 years, you better be ready now for when that happens. Uh, another you know, issue is the, the block size. You know, this idea that we're going to have to hard fork uh, block size changes in. That can't be the way it goes. You know, that's going to have to be taken into account now. We're going to have to have some system inbuilt in the chain now that allows the block size to be dynamic, which Minima has. And um, so what we've ended up with, if, if, you know, the way I look at it, um, is we've ended up with the coin that I originally wanted, that I originally thought Bitcoin was going to be, you know, a totally decentralized uh, cryptocurrency where no single group or cartel, since it's always the group of users, no user or cartel of users, have any influence over the network at all. Um, currently, the mantra, the mantra of all the coins is, hey, you've all got to run full nodes. Yeah? So you've got Bitcoin with millions of users and you've got 10,000 full nodes. And not only is it only 10,000 full nodes and not a million full nodes, but actually a full node is, is slightly disingenuous, if you ask me, because it's not actually a full node. It's not a full, full node. It's a full validating node. Mm. It's not actually involved in the construction of the chain. It's only involved in the validation and the rubber stamping of the work the miners do. And so what this means is that validation isn't even a defense against censorship. You know, there's nothing the validators can do to prevent censorship. The only users on the Bitcoin network that are involved in preventing censorship attack are the miners. There's only 10 of them. Yeah. So it's like we've totally forgotten about that. And everybody's like, no, 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 valid, full validating is enough. And it's like, well, it's not really. Yeah, what I want is I want a million complete nodes, as I call them. And a complete node does everything. You know, it does the validation and it does the construction. And this is something that I don't see anybody do. You know, and in fact, you know, the Trons, the Neos, the hash graphs, the, the, the Tezoses, the Telegram, you know, all of these chains have gone deep pulse, gone for a smaller delegate base, gone for even fewer constructors, which I, don't, which I find strange. You know, whereas what we want to do is we want to do it the opposite way. And so, you know, for me, you know, when we reach a million complete nodes, when we reach a, a, a network size of users that are not only validating, but actually constructing the chain, that's it. It's done. You know, I'll be happy now. Um, I think that's it. Okay, so... <laughs>